Tristan, your harness has been completed. Um, so I've actually, I'm actually running your harness on a 3UZ rather than on a, on a 1UZ VVT. Um, it's something that you may want to keep in mind for the future if you ever want to look at doing an upgrade. Um, is that you can run a you can run a 3UZ uh, motor on a 1UZ engine management system. Um, it'll definitely give you more power and torque and whatnot. So yeah, that's just something for the future, just to keep in mind. If something does you know go bad with your 1UZ, then keep that in mind and maybe then look at upgrading to a 3UZ. Anyway, all of your injector connectors have been replaced, your cam sensor connectors or your uh, uh, post cam sensor connectors have been replaced. EFI water temp sensor, um, you've got another connector in here that takes a water temp sensor from a Toyota. You'll see just underneath the EFI sensor there's a little stopper plug. You can literally screw that out, screw in a Toyota sensor and that'll plug straight into that, making everything watertight and whatnot. Um, your oil control valve connectors have been replaced and all of your coil connectors have been replaced. It's a typical thing with the 1UZ VVT. All of these connectors tend to go bad as well as, um, as well as, you know, well, pretty, pretty much most of the, most of the connectors on these, on these motors. Anyway, it comes down here, it splits off. Okay. That goes to a five pin connector for your airflow meter. We'll plug that in in a moment. It runs down, it goes into your, it goes into the back of your alternator. Um, it plugs into this, which is probably not going to be used on your, on your um, motor. Okay, if you've changed your sump or whatever. It's a low oil, it doesn't actually apply. Um, I should have actually told the guys to get that, to remove that for you. But it's not going to make any difference there or not, okay. Um, and then running to the back here, you've got your right hand O2 sensor. Make sure that those are plugged in, it's very, very important. <coughs> On the right hand side here, on the right hand bank, you've got a, you've got an earth terminal and on the left you've got another one coming over there. Make sure that both of those are properly secured and also it's advisable to take a secondary earth strap like that from these secondary nuts on the heads and just take them up to your firewall ensuring that you do have a proper earth going to your, going to your cylinder heads. Okay, this side very much the same as the other side. Um, most of these connectors have been replaced. These are just a noise filter. This is your EVAP, okay. Um, running down here then, you've got your oil control valve for the left hand bank. You've got your, um, well, you've got your accelerator position sensor over here. You've got your throttle position over there and you've got your um, uh, clutch and motor control, okay, for your throttle by wire. Running down here, you've got a front um, cam sensor, which is your pre-VVTI cam sensor. Make sure that that's plugged in. It runs down, goes into your aircon compressor clutch. Runs further down, goes to your um, crank sensor. Okay, and then it also splits off and it goes to your oil pressure switch. Now, this as a 1UZ uh, VVT, we've wired this in with oil pressure protection. Um, so. If this is not plugged in, what will happen is that your fuel pump will run continuously. Make sure that is plugged in, then your fuel pump will only run when the engine is running or being cracked. Okay, so if you do lose oil pressure for some reason, what will happen is it will actually shut down your fuel pump and hopefully save your motor. Okay, I'm running down here, splits off, goes to your fuse box. Okay. Same deal inside the fuse box, you've got obviously all of your fuses, you've got an engine light, you've got a ground terminal, starter relay, fuel control relays, EFI and main relays, everything is documented on the bottom of your fuse box lid. Okay, running through here now. So GS, uh, being a GS400 harness obviously now your ECU sits in the engine bay. Okay, so you've got your grommet there to make your computer sealed from elements as best as you can. Running down, you've got a bridge terminal. You're going to ignore that, leave that, don't unplug it. You've got a 16 gauge, or not a 16, you've got a 10 gauge cable coming out. That's your main power supply for the system. That goes directly to your battery positive. Okay. Then you have all of your ECU connectors. Just plug them in. There's nothing else that can be done there. And then you've got these two connectors coming out. 
um, which is basically what you're going to be working with. This four-pin connector, we give you a patch harness, so it's a five foot, six foot, whatever um, section of harness, and on the end of that, <clears throat> you've got an OBD2 connector. Um, I've got my interface plugged in here because we'll just make sure that you have got communication for um, OBD2 diagnostics. And then here you've got this 10 pin connector which is basically what you're going to be connecting to your vehicle. So you've got your ignition, you've got your crank, you've got your fuel pump, you've got your rev counter, temperature gauge, oil light, charge light, engine light and you've got your air con compressor clutch. So that'll cover your um, cluster as well as getting the engine to run. You can start the engine basically on the on the floor okay, before you even put, the, put it into the car. That you'll connect up with this, so uh, basically a patch harness, like a pigtail, okay? Um, you wire that into your vehicle, plug that into your harness, and she will run. Okay, so let me, I'm going to quickly put on the airbox air and whatnot, and then we'll give her a test run, and just make sure that she has got um, communication. Okay, so I've put on the airbox, um, basically plugged in the airflow meter. Um... So these airflow meter housings we are giving away with the harnesses these, this month, okay? We do it with a square flange like this if you're going to be using a uh, air box, okay? Or we do it with a round on either side um, where you can put a cone filter. You just need to let me know what your plan is as far as what your air intake goes. If you are using a, um, just give me your inside diameter of your cone filter if you're going that route. If you're using a cone filter in a fabricated box, let me know, and then we will draw, draw it accordingly. So you'll basically have a square flange that'll bolt onto your box, and then you'll have another section coming out here of the, of the inside diameter of your cone filter. Okay, it's always best to do that because then you've actually got a true cold air intake rather than picking up air from your um, engine bay. Okay, that's the one thing you've got to be careful of. Another thing is, is um, your 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 uh, ventilation system for the engine block you've got a tube coming out of your right hand valve cover that needs to be connected between your throttle body and your airflow meter so the air getting pulled through that is being calculated by the airflow meter um, that all gets pulled through from the side so here you've got a you've got a valve and that will basically be connected up here to your throttle body i don't have that <clears throat> on this harness because um it's obviously a start stand start stand harness let's quickly switch on so you can hear there now the fuel pump is running um, and that is because I've just switched the ignition on and the oil pressure has been unplugged because I've got a I've got a different sensor on there so I can't plug that in but let me just show you if I can get a ground it has all been tested so I do know that it does function See if I can't get a ground here somewhere. Anyway, when that does get a ground, what'll happen is the fuel pump will switch off. Let me give her a run and then, um, well, let's quickly see if we've got communication. So let's, I do this first because I don't have a cooling system on the motor. I can't, can't run it for very long. So you are gonna be picking up quite a few codes here because of the transmission. These are obviously not flashable computers. So you're going to be getting um, trouble codes as far as the transmission goes and secondary O2s and stuff like that. But it's been wired in a way that will not affect the performance of the motor at all. So um, I would just ignore that and only look for codes that are relevant to the actual functionality of the motor. Let's just see here now. So there you can see it picks up basically. I know it's kind of weird, it always picks it up as a 430, but yeah, they got the year right. So that is basically what it is. We'll do a DTC scan, um, just so that we can see that it is all working. Oh. Could have actually just gone straight. If I can go out, let me go there. do that so it doesn't have to scan everything so that's engine control and transmission obviously there are codes so shift solenoids all transmission related stuff as you can see 
Um, there will be other ones also popping up like fuel control and whatnot. All stuff that's got nothing to do with the motor. Okay, so all of that you just ignore. But let's let's give her a run here. Ah, so. too long there's no there's no real point in that but yeah she runs great no missing no nothing like that um obviously your obd2 diagnostics is working and uh let me know about your air filter or your air you know your air intake tube it's very important to get that right because the inside diameter a lot of a lot of people mess that up and obviously it's um, being calibrated according to you know the cfm speed um through that you know particular diameter so it's very important that that is um you know drawn out properly but yeah if you've got any questions or anything like that let me know um it should be smooth sailing for you